Smith will be speaking on interreach movements of brook trout in Smitty Creek Watershed in Franklin County, New York. <laughs> Smitty Creek Watershed. Uh, it's in Franklin County, New York, near uh, Paul Smith College. Um, this project is a capstone done through through the college. Um, it's not 100% done yet. There's still a little bit of data analysis that I need to, or that I might need to get done here. But um, I'm going to display here what what results I've come up with so far. Um, so just some background. Smitty Creek has been researched um, for the past, I think, 11 years now. You know, there's been a host of other capstones that um, have dealt with this creek. This one was by a student named Seamus Haggerty. Uh, among other things, he found that uh, catch rates in brook trout decreased uh, between the fall sampling and the spring sampling of the next year. Um, here you can see the percentages of declines and all except for the middle the middle smitty reach there, um, they're all well over 50% declines. Um, and another more recent capstone done by a student named Nathan Mills, um, he looked at the long-term data between what, like 2004 and uh, just a couple of years ago. And um, one of the relationships he found was a age zero brook trout, uh, cash numbers for them was pretty closely correlated with um, pretty much total snowfall in January, the January previous to the sampling effort. Um, so these, these previous studies kind of raised some questions for me, namely if trout are declining uh, that significantly, or is it cause, or because they're just suffering high rates of mortality or are they moving out of the system? Um, my hypothesis here is that if the overwinter declines are caused by an age zero fish, are caused by a <coughs> movement out of the watershed, that um, fish should exhibit some patterns of downstream movement as the temperatures decrease um, as it gets closer to winter. So, um, some background on the Smitty Creek watershed itself. It contains actually six reaches in um, the we focus on four for this study. The two others are uh, Beaver, which I believe is this one right here, upper the upper middle reach or the upper Smitty reach. Um, the reaches are about 35 times the mean stream width, and um, they have about 13 to 15 transects per reach. Um, the lower reach is the third order stream. It's a uh, little little bit deeper, a little bit wider. Um, the middle reach is the second order stream. I like to call it the reach from hell. It's, um, it's got a lot of woody debris. It takes it to, we've, I've, I've sampled the stream before, just both in classes and for this project, and I myself have never gotten through a full three passes because it's just so difficult to get through. Um, and then Aldo and Little Aldo are first order streams, mostly bigger uh, bigger cobbles and boulders, boulder type habitat, not as much weed debris. Uh, Little Aldo Creek is very small, it's only like a meter across. Um, the methods used, we use a three, uh, three pass depletion using uh, electro fishing units, uh, block nets at the top of the reaches. What we did is we sampled once in September first couple weeks of September, and we gave the brook trout reach-specific fin clips. Um, and then we sampled again in the first couple weeks in November, looking for, um, looking for where these fish move. And we track them by using these reach-specific fin clips. Um, we also took some water temperatures. You can see here, we got a, a drop of about 10, 11 degrees Celsius, so the water temperatures did drop fairly noticeably. Um, we also took a couple population estimates. Um, 
for middle reach, like I said, we couldn't we couldn't get through uh, three full passes due to some difficulties with sampling it. So for that, we just have the total number of fish sampled. All others were uh, calculated using microfish. As you can see, with the exception of the middle reach right there, the um, the population estimates went down between the first and second period. We also looked at the ages of these fish that were sampled. Um, according to a previous capstone that was also done on Smitty Creek, um, we considered individuals under 90 millimeters in length to be uh, age zero and fish at 90 millimeters bigger <coughs> to be uh, age one or greater. And, um, as you can see here, we have a majority of our sample here are age zero fish. We have a couple of age one and above fish, but not, not quite as many. Um, so for the, uh, for the movements of the marked fish we got, we actually found um, most, most reaches, we just had a couple, you know, like a, a little aloe in the lower reach. We had a few fish from those respective reaches that were marked from those respective reaches um, that hadn't moved, and then, you know, a, a lot of unmarked fish. In Aldo and Middle Reach, however, as well as the, the, their own respective marked fish, we had, uh, between the two, we had seven fish uh, from the lower reach, which actually kind of suddenly so moved upstream of the train, kind of um, counter to my hypothesis. Um, again, we also had a lot of unmarked fish in all, uh, all reaches. Um, that's. <coughs> have um, looking at the mean lengths and ages of the fish that moved upstream from uh, the lower reach, um, they were all age zero fish. I mean, there were only seven of them, so it wasn't a very, very significant subset, but we had seven fish, all age zero, all under 90 millimeters in length. Um, so, what can we conclude from this? We got um, we had no age zero brook trout were found to have definitely moved down the stream, but we did have a small number of, of age zero individuals that uh, were found to move upstream to lower order reaches as temperatures decreased. Um, and again, we had a lot of unmarked fish sampled during the second period, which kind of indicates that there was definitely some movements in and out. Now, the direction of this movement and how far they moved it, whether it was actually between the reaches or just in and out of the in and out of the sample area, um, that couldn't be determined by what we have so far. Uh, for this project, I'd like to thank foremost. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Craig Maluski. He was a big help with this. He helped with sampling, fish processing, uh, fin clipping, and the data analysis. Um, I'd also like to thank Celia Evans, another professor at Paul Smith College, for the, um, for the capstone planning portion. And um, lastly, I'd like to thank everyone who came out and helped me, mostly through the uh, Paul Smith Fisheries and Aquatic Science student organization. Um, it was a big help, because walk, walking, walking out there in the woods with a ton of gear, it, it can be a two-person job, but it's much easier with more than two people. So, <laughs> At this point, I'll take any questions. We have time for questions. Since they didn't move, do you conclude they died? Um, I can't conclude that they definitely died. I mean, it's probably that could probably look at a further study. I'm not sure. How for certain? I mean, if there is a way to observe them over the winter, that would probably be a, an interesting way to see if there's a lot of mortality. I'm not really sure how you feel about looking at that, though. But no, I, I can't conclude that they definitely, they definitely suffer a lot of mortality. Yes. Um, what was your reasoning for using fin clips versus some kind of unique identifier for each of the fish? It was mostly, mostly a budget thing. You know, it's, yeah. easy to, it's easy to do reach specific fin clips. 
Um, at, at the moment, we didn't have any tags or other marking. 